have prepared and prepared and prepared <laughs> and we are ready for this and we are really excited. Hello Dragons, I'm Nick and I'm the founder and CEO of the Snaffling Pig Company. I'm here today with my business partner and marketing director Andy. Hello. And we are looking for a £70,000 investment for a 10% stake of our business, the Snaffling Pig. For the last five years, there has been a noticeable trend in the British food and drink culture. Beer has had a revolution in craft, burgers have gone gourmet and popcorn has even turned adventurous. All of these familiar favourites have been refreshed with skill and passion and now see a much wider audience as a result. Yet, there is one humble but very awesome snack that has remained firmly in the shadows. Dragons, it's time for our pig reveal. We present to you... The Pork Scratching. For over 250 years, this cheeky indulgence of a snack has been loved by so very many people, but has remained completely and utterly unchanged. So we set out two years ago to take this little piggy to markets he's never been before. Now, to make that pig envision a reality, we set about tackling some of the key challenges we felt the market typically faced. First, there's the nature of the product itself. We often hear people are worried about breaking their teeth and others seem to half expect to find a nipple in a bag of scratchings. So we only take prime cuts of pork, which we then double cook. Secondly, there was a lack of variation, so we developed a range of 11 flavours. And finally, this little piggy had an image problem. So we set about creating a range of innovative formats for the pub market, through to a range of gifting jars, and even wedding flavours. It turns out he's quite a versatile swine. The pork scratching market is worth 40 million a year. So, with our innovative brands, we fully expect to take this business to a £6.9 million turnover with a £630,000 net profit within the next three years. Dragons, we would love you to be part of our venture and together, let's make the pig and magic happen. Thank you. A pitch with gusto from less than diffident duo Nick Coleman and Andrew Allen. So we've got black pepper. Lovely. They're offering 10% of their snack business in return for £70,000. Um, we do have ghost chilli flavoured and we'll knock your socks off. I love the hot one. But, but, Is it really hot? Yes, it's, it's super hot. Oh my god. Yeah, you might want some milk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, water. Okay. Multi-millionaire Nick Jenkins has already taken one very big piggy to market with his Moon Pig greetings card empire. That is hot. That is hot. <laughs> Will he have the appetite to add to his portfolio? Wow, okay. Okay, now, now you know, obviously I, <clears throat> I have a natural <laughs> preference for the all things porcine. Um, how, how did you get into this? About six years ago, I started my own business uh, selling medical supplies. But two years ago, I wanted to get involved in a consumer brand. So that, just explain that, that that's, that's a very really natural progression. Yeah, that's there, so from, natural. From medical it? supplies <laughs> into pig related. I mean, you know, I came from commodity trading into Russia into, yeah. into, uh, into a pig related greeting card business. So I, yeah. I kind of get where you're coming from. Uh, guys, I love pork scratchings. Yeah, um, I'm your perfect customer, except that I'm also completely aware of the fat and the salt. Now, we all know the trends are going towards healthier food. We all know there are problems with salt. We all know there are problems with fat. I think this size bag might be a little alarming, <laughs> although I promise you I could eat that. <laughs> no problem at all, and ask for the next one. The larger pack, you're slightly less guilty than you think because that's a slightly different product, so there's about the same level of calories as in the smaller bag. That's a lighter, fluffy one, so you can demolish it for you. 636 okay. calories. Uh, yes. I looked straight on the back to oh, check yes. how, much, how, how, how many meals I had to skip to be able to eat that entire packet. It's, a, it's an indulgence, as you said. It's one of those <laughs> things. It's not something you would be eating every day. So tell me, this sounds like, it sounds, sounds like you had an amazing first year. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so we, talk, talk me through those numbers. So uh, year one, which will end in May 2017, uh, we have projected 2.2 million with a gross of 1.1 million and a net of 165,000. Mm -hmm. Year two, we have an, um, a turnover expected of 4.5 million with a gross of 1.9 million and a net of 420. And in year three, 6.9 million with a gross of 2.8 million and a net of 630.
you've obviously got overheads of 2.2 million. So what's the breakdown of that? So, um, it's, uh, so the first thing is it's made up of um, money from uh, the majority of the money is being spent on on our, our uh, staff. How much of that 2.2 million is, is going to be salaries? Um, it is uh, 480. But that still leaves 1.8 million pounds of overhead. Do you know what, Nick? I've forgotten some of the figures. I'm so sorry. No, no, it should be um, in your head. I mean, there's, there's, there's a right. big number here. Either you're going to do some massive TV campaign or you're going to airily bombard um, Coventry with, with, with pork scratchings or something is going to cost £1.7 million. Pounds. What is it? So I'm forgetting some of our additional overheads that we have in there, um, whether it's our, um, I said it's our IT, it's our contingency. Um, there is obviously advertising. Um, and, and PR. That was just a little bit, a little bit vague. Um, anyway, that's not terribly good. The once confident entrepreneurs have floundered over their figures, and in the den, that can be a recipe for disaster. It was the calorie count that Deborah Meaden took issue with, but could she still pick the piggy pair for investment? Don't look at me with a lot of hope in your eyes. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, because I don't want to do it. I've decided that, you know, I work with organic, I work with healthy, I move towards that end of the market, and this just isn't going to sit with me. You've done some fantastic stuff here, and it might be the oddest reason in the world, but sometimes it just doesn't fit. So um, I won't be investing. I'm out. I've done something similar in terms of uh, that came into the den. It's popcorn related. Um, I've certainly gone through that whole journey um, for, for several years and it was really exciting. And at the start, we did really well. And then we found that there was some very serious competition that came into the marketplace. The price really moved and almost overnight took the rug from under the business. I'm concerned because I think that your margins will come under pressure as you scale the business. The, the market's in growth, 13% year on year. Um, so we're going to come under some pressure. That's why we've pushed so hard on the branded jars and those. And we've done particularly well with Nut on the High Street. Um, we were yeah. their fastest growing uh, food and drink partner last year. We're going to be featured heavily for Father's Day um, and for Christmas. And we're working on the advent calendar you see at the end there. It does answer a gift for a difficult to buy man. You know, pigs might fly, but I can't see you're going to get there. I really can't. And I think, sadly, I think it's going to hit that plateau. So I'm going to say that I'm out. Peter Jones walks away, concerned over the scalability of the business. Nick Jenkins is the last dragon standing. Will he be the one to save their bacon? Look, I'm going to make you an offer. Uh, I'm going to make you an offer for all of the money, but I would want 20% of the business, and that would make it worthwhile. Thank you very much for the offer. Can we go have a chat? Go and have a chat. Thank you. Which one is that? Finally, an offer. But Nick Jenkins' equity demand of 20% is double the 10% the entrepreneurs want to give away. What do you think? OK. I think this will be the shortest chat in history. Well, will they strike a deal? Good. I think that's the way. Excellent. Great, a little chat then. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for that offer. It's very humbling to know that you want to be involved in our journey. So we're, we're very excited by that. Um, obviously, we came in looking for 10. Obviously, we're willing to negotiate. Um, we're very, we really believe in where this product's going to go. But what we'd like to do is put our money where our mouth is. So what we'd like to do is offer you the 20% today. Yep. But we'd like the chance to be able to buy back your shares at today's market rate in 18 months' time once we hit our sales and our profit projections. Back to the 10. Uh, back buy to back, the 10. back to 10. Yes. In 18 months? In 18 months. And then it's a deal. Yes! yes. The pigs have merged. There we go. Yes. <laughs> the pork scratching entrepreneurs have done it. Fantastic. They've given away 20% of their business, but with a buyback agreement that will potentially see Nick Jenkins' stake drop to 10% in 18 months' time. Thank you so much. Uh, That's brilliant. Thank you. Well, uh, fantastic. Well, fantastic. fantastic. You're two chuff little piglets. Yeah. <laughs> this little piggy has gone to market. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
we're all good friends. Well, you do like pigs, don't you? They were good guys. Yeah. Very, very smart guys. It's going to be so exciting to see what other things we're going to come up with. We've got the king of gifting, Mr. Moonpig himself, <laughs> involved in snaffling pig. It's the perfect marriage. Fantastic. <laughs>